Okay, GSP came out and he was making a statement that he doesn't like fighting. He's never liked fighting. It was just something that he did. And by the way, you've likely heard George say things like this before. George has been one of the few guys who has been very open and honest about the mental side of his career. More young athletes can thank and learn from GSP because GSP is the one athlete who's ever been open and honest with you, the audience, but also the fellow athletes who look up to him. George St. Pierre is largely letting you know, as you sit and read these things about how George would get nervous for fights and he didn't, he didn't like fighting itself, as you start to read that, if you come to any conclusion other than this is the greatest of all time letting you know that it's okay. He's letting you know it's okay to be apprehensive. It's okay to feel those nerves. It's okay to not want to do it. If you're not getting that message when George comes out and he speaks very openly about you, you're, you're missing what the great is attempting to hand to the next generation. And I must tell you, because I've been asked this question, did you like fighting? Did you? And I loved it. I loved it. Loved wrestling too, right? Wrestlers as a kid, but I, I, they coupled together in my mind. It was Saturday and you're shaking hands and you're competing with somebody in an outfit that you'd rather not be wearing. I will say it to you like this, though. The match itself was the worst part. The walkout was great. The buildup, the gym, the things I learned from Clayton Hires in terms of life lessons while we were on this hill doing a coach's run. I mean, these are things that I couldn't have got anywhere else, and so I couple it together, and I loved it. The, you get high from a weight cut, by the way. You guys might even read this in the Bible where it talks about fasting is good for clarity. When you get so hungry and in such food and calorie deprivation, there is a high, it's miserable. I do not encourage you to go and go without food, you know, for, for, for 45 days. I'll just share with you, when I look back, I only have these good memories. But to George's point, the worst part of all of those memories was the match. And I believe everybody to be like that, I have met two exceptions in my life. Two exceptions that were real, that weren't just saying it to look like tough guys, or weren't just saying it because they were trying to convince themselves that it was true. Randy Couture genuinely liked to compete. He genuinely liked it. He never looked at it with animosity. He looked at it as a competition. You could figure the rules out if you want. He'd race you. He'd put on his shoes and race you on a Saturday morning. Whatever rules you want to do, but if it was competition, you're keeping score, somebody wins and somebody loses, he was in. He just really enjoyed that. Now, Matt Lindland on the other side liked the straight-up fight. I was in a rules meeting. Matt was getting ready to fight Pat Militich. And they had just done something with the elbow rule. This is roughly 2003. So you guys might recall there's been things that have happened with the elbow rule. The one that got John Jones disqualified, the 12 to 6. I mean, they've done some stuff with the elbows. There was a, a period of time where New Jersey, and it might be true right now, did not allow elbows on the ground. I'm just talking broad stroke elbow rule. We were in Nevada. Matt's getting ready to fight Militich. There was a fighter rules meeting, which will now be conducted one-on-one. -on -one. Herb Dean will walk to your locker room and talk to you privately with your cornerman. Mark Goddard will come and talk to you privately with your cornerman and then do the same thing for your opponent. But it used to be we all just piled in a room. Everybody on the card and all your cornerman Big John would give the rules meeting. We all, we all sat there and listened. If there's questions, you asked them. But I remember being there when Big John informed the fighters of this car they could not elbow a downed opponent. And Big John then reminded them they could also not kick a downed opponent, meaning the soccer kick, which was a big thing and going on in pride at the time. And I remember the genuine, it was, it was a child at Christmas. It was a child at Christmas who was disappointed when Matt Lindland found out there was no elbows on the ground and that you couldn't soccer kick your opponent. Oh, by the way, he's getting ready to fight the former world champion at Pat Militich, who and Pat Militich at the time was a two to one favorite, just to remind you guys of that night. So this wasn't as though Matt was looking to go bully somebody or go show off some highlight reel foot. Matt's supposed to get his butt kicked. And he was still so genuinely disappointed that they took these two toys away from him. It was very real. I mean, he didn't say anything. He didn't say this in front of the room. I happened to be sitting next to him. I saw his face. I saw his eyes. I heard him. Oh, I heard him sigh. He couldn't believe 
that they took these <laughs> they took these away from him going, Matt, this is a good thing. The more rules in this sport that has almost no rule, hey, that's a good thing. They've never put a rule into this sport that wasn't a good rule. Not that I've ever seen. So let me bring that to you because what George is talking to you about represents the masses. Mike Tyson, who's one of the, the most intimidating fighters ever. Cain Velasquez, who's right next to Mike Tyson for the most intimidating ever. They will share those same thoughts that George shared. They'll just do it privately. They haven't, they haven't worked up the muster to come and share that publicly yet because they feel it reflects negatively on them. And maybe it does. Maybe you guys do look at it as a sign of weakness. But you're hearing it from the guy who showed no weaknesses. And it's a very open approach, not to mention when you look at the life that George leads. George is in practice twice a day every day, right now. George is ready to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov up until 10 weeks ago. George does a fast the first five days of every month where he, the only thing he puts in his body is water every month. I mean, it's an extreme life of discipline that is absolutely ready to compete and show that he's the best in the world at any time. And this is coming from a guy that doesn't like it. Does it really matter if you like it? I mean, there's a major lesson in here. There's a major, major life lesson in here that has nothing to do with MMA. Does it matter if you like it? Or is it more important that you did it? Those are your choices. You probably don't want to go out and mow your, your yard. But if you get up and mow your yard, your neighbors now aren't upset with you because your lawn looks good. I mean, it's just one of these things. Does it really matter how you feel? And so many times in life, I think you do need to ask yourself that. And I do watch society as a whole becoming weaker right now because we're talking about and we're accepting from the youth what you wanted to do and how did it make you feel? It would, it would seem the same in an opposite and negative way to me. My son came to me someday and he said, man, it was Saturday night. I was out with the boys and, and I really wanted to drink a beer. But he then informs me he didn't do it. I'm proud of him. But it speaks to the action over the mindset. So sometimes you have to identify in life what it is you want and how are you going to get it? And if you have to do things that you don't like along the way to get you to the end, you've either got to accept that now or quit now.